What's up guys, Max Kaler here with VisualSidekick.net. Today we're going to be going over laser output and control from beyond into Depense. As you can see in front of me here um, on the top portion of the screen, I've got 12 lasers configured and receiving an NDI signal coming from beyond. Um, we're going to be using an NDI protocol, um, otherwise known as a network device interface. I'm going to be setting it up over a local host so both softwares are on the same computer. If you are using two different computers, all you'd have to do is set up a network switch and then make sure both computers are within the same IP range. So I'll just go ahead and show um, everything is set up and working properly. Um, we can click through the different queue lists here just to show you. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is export our MVR file. So this entire scene here, um, I'm going to go to File, Export, Export MVR. I'm going to export all of the visible objects. So that's everything uh, that you can see in the object types here. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to navigate to the folder that I want to export to. I'm just going to call this Lasers and hit OK. So um, we'll hop into Depends here, and now we can import that exact a a uh, asset, so that uh, MVR file. So we can go File, Import, Import MVR, and that's that file that we just created. Um, the first thing Depends wants us to do is match the devices to their fixture library. So um, we have the Kavant. I'm just going to type in Kavant and find the 33 watt spectrum that I designed with. And I'm going to click and drag that into the matching type column right there. Um, in this case, I don't have anything else in my project. But if you did have other assets like lighting fixtures or video tiles that you had in your Depends file and you don't want to remove them when you import this new MVR, you'd want to go ahead and deselect those. In this case, it doesn't matter because I have I'm starting with a blank project, but just wanted to point that out. So you're not deleting anything you, that already exists in your project. And then we can go ahead and hit OK. And some uh, quick navigation features. If I use the scroll on the mouse, it zooms in and out. Um, right click is uh, your pan. And then if I click the scroll, I can anchor and zoom, um, or uh, sorry, orbit around that anchor. So. Uh, there, yeah, there we go. Um, right away, I can tell a lot of these lasers are just on the off stage side of this truss. So um, what I can do is actually uh, select and hit shift and select all of those lasers. I'm going to go into a CAD view. And then on the camera, I'm going to go into the left perspective. And I'm just going to go ahead and recenter that. Um, that way, they're actually um, on the truss as they would be in real life. So we can go back to our project view now. And um, in order to get this to communicate with uh, Beyond, it's pretty simple. Um, basically, what we need to do is, is uh, uh, set the laser source. So um, this starting at the, the most upstage. So like from a front perspective, what I'm going to do here is just number these from 1 through 12 um, going left to right, top to bottom. So this is going to be 1, 2 and so on. Um, so we'll just quickly do this. Um, just bear with me here. Um, it's going to be a little tedious, but you know, you'd have to do this um, on your side as well. So uh, maybe just do yours while we uh, while you follow along here. So um, the first laser source is already set to one. I'm going to grab the second laser and change that to two. And so on here. Make this a little bigger. So we've got three. We're going to go to four. So the next laser is going to be five. And then we got six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, and the last one, we've got 12. Um, one other thing that I just thought of that you're going to want to check. So we're using 
um, 12 lasers here, uh, by default, if you go into the application settings and uh, click on lasers, I think by default this is set to like four. Um, I always just crank it right up to 100. I've never designed with over 100 lasers, so um, I just leave it at that setting. It won't output more than four lasers um, unless you change that. So I just wanted to point that feature out. So uh, yeah, we've got our laser scene ready to, to uh, you know, accept that NDI signal from beyond. So we're gonna go ahead and just pop over to beyond. And the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is create those laser zones. Um, I'm on the latest version. This new feature is pretty nice. So like, I'm gonna, hit, gonna hit this plus icon. And for some reason, uh, Beyond doesn't want you to use just numbers in their zone file naming convention. So I'm just gonna uh, type these out. One, two, three, four all the way down to 12. And then the last thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is uh, choose an assign visualization fixture ID starting at one. And I believe when I hit add, we'll double check it, just hit okay and then close. And uh, this was that default zone uh, that was in there when we opened uh, this window. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. So we just have our 12 zone files or zone layers. Um, in the advanced, what, uh, what I wanna check is to make sure that these were offset. So yeah, so one is, has a fixture number of one, two is two, and so on. 11 and 12. Um, okay, so the the other thing I'm gonna wanna check, we're gonna go to projector settings and like I would in real life, I'm going to just bring this up to 100 by 100. Um, you would probably also uh, adjust the scan rate if you're on site using real lasers, but this is just a simulated dem demo laser, so I'm just gonna leave it at the default. But uh, yeah, I brought the scale of that zone um, up to 100 uh, for each of those. And actually, the, the other thing I'm gonna wanna check is to just make sure these are all pointed to our demo uh, projector there. All right, so the last thing we need to do and beyond is go into view and just make sure this enable visualization via external software is selected. And I can just hit yes. I'm gonna click this test pattern and I right away, I can see that the lasers are outputting correctly. And just to double check that, we can go into our uh, laser zones and just one at a time, I'll enable these. Looks like all 12 are working correctly. I'm just gonna pop into Depends here and we'll just rotate from a back perspective and just kind of tidy up these zones like they would be in real life. So I'm gonna grab all 12 um, and typically, you know, your size is squished a little like that. So I'm just gonna bring it down to 20, the size on the vertical scale. I'm gonna bring the position um, up and then let's turn them all on here. Um, and like, I like to stagger these a little bit. So like the, the, the highest lasers, I'm gonna keep a little high, um, five through eight, I'm just gonna bring down a bit and then nine through 12, I'll bring, bring down even more. Just hit okay, fix our perspective. We'll just look at that test pattern again. Cool, so everything's outputting correctly. Um, and one last thing I'd like to show you guys. Um, I use this on site uh, during the show often. Um, a lot of people to mirror these, uh, these zones, uh, what they would do is just take all the stage left lasers and 
make the size minus 100. However, um, I use an effect. We'll add it here, a key effect, geometric size, and I can make the size on the X value uh, minus 100. And with that effect created, I can actually go into, uh, I can right click and add an action. And on the channel, I can activate a beyond channel, beyond channel one. And we'll just hit OK all the way through here. And now when I enable and disable that, you can see this, this laser here is be getting mirrored every time I enable that. So we'll just take that effect. I'm going to hit copy and just add it to all the stage left lasers. And just hit OK. So there you go. That's a pretty nice feature. There might be some songs where you want everything panning from left to right, and then other songs, uh, a nice symmetrical look. So cool, guys. That's it for this tutorial. Um, pretty quick and painless. Uh, we'll see you next time.